Hey everybody, it's Paul from Inside PA Training, your physician assistant career and education resource. You can find us at mypatraining.com. Have something a little different for you today. Uh, I've done some videos and articles for you about stethoscopes, how to use them, how to maintain them, um, how they work. Have one today to review for you, and it's interesting because it's an electronic stethoscope. You've probably heard me talk a little bit about electronic stethoscopes, um, and I mostly have discouraged them, um, but uh, since I had one I thought I'd review it and it is kind of useful to know how they work. It's very possible that this kind of technology in the future will be the norm. Um, but for today I'm reviewing an ADC, that's American Diagnostic Corporation, Ad Scope. Uh, the series is 657. They make a number of, uh, let's see, Actually, this is their only electronic stethoscope. There are a number of electronic digital stethoscopes on the market. Uh, Littman has two of them. So this is the unit. Um, I actually got it. I'm borrowing it from a friend who used it on a helicopter. Um, they got it hoping that on the helicopter they would be able to use this and amplify the sound so that they could hear lung sounds and heart sounds over the noise of the rotor. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. So anyway, um, the 657 retails for between $140 and $170, uh, depending on where you find it. It comes with an extra set of ear tips, comes in a very simple box, and uh, this is what it looks like. Traditional aluminum ear, ear pieces, rubber tips. This neck here is made of a synthetic plastic, uh, sorry, rubber. Um, fairly soft. You'll notice this portion of the neck here is wide and that's because it houses a AAA battery which powers the amplification unit. Doesn't close very well. Take note. Uh, then we have a uh, synthetic rubber tube and then this is the chest piece where all the magic happens. Um, this doesn't have a diaphragm with air under it the way a regular stethoscope does. Um, this amplifies vibrations directly uh, through the skin or whatever you're touching. The way an electronic stethoscope works is through electronics it's amplifying the sound um, and depending on you know which um, how the chip runs inside the stethoscope you can listen to different frequencies so this stethoscope has three frequency ranges and then volume adjustments so the way it operates is you press the power button here you see a little green light come on I don't know if you can see it there are three green lights at the top one of them is lighted right now it's the it says B there's B D and W B stands for bell this, uh, when this is lighted, you're going to be hearing the lower tones, like you would hear in, say, a murmur, uh, mitral stenosis, something like that. Um, and those tones are between 15 and 200 hertz, to give you an idea if you're a science person. Uh, and then if you hit it again, hopefully it will do it. It's been giving me trouble. I'm not quite sure. It may need a new battery, just to be fair. But I'm having trouble. Anyway, when you hit this button, it should go to then to D, which is the higher range sounds, the diaphragm. And the range on that is uh, 200 to 5, I think it's 100 to 500 hertz. So somewhat higher than the bell. And then finally is this W, which is a third setting, and that's the wide frequency. And that's 15, which is the bottom of the range of the bell, all the way up to 1,000, which is twice as high pitch as the diaphragm sounds normally. So that's a much broader range of sound. And um, along with it, you'll see two buttons here. These are volume up and down buttons. There are eight different volumes. You can amplify the sound up to 16 times what you would normally hear in a stethoscope. And I do have to say, uh, it is quite a bit louder. Um, and that's a nice feature. In terms of my review, what I found is, uh, and I think this is a measure of the quality of the electronics in this, along with the sounds you want to hear like heart tones and lung tones, the ambient noise is also amplified. The ambient noise being you know, the noise in the room or the uh, air conditioning. Um, when I listened to my own heart, I heard a nice strong heartbeat, but along with it I heard ambient noise amplified, which was a kind of a hiss. So what I heard was a 
loved up, loved up, and in the background I heard a and the more you amplify it, the louder that hiss becomes. So in that way, it kind of defeated the purpose to me uh, because why would you want it louder if you're going to make the noise along with the sound louder as well? So the end of the story of where I got this, my friend who got this to use on a helicopter, uh, is that they ended up not using it for uh, two reasons. Number one, it just didn't get loud enough, which you can imagine it's very loud on a helicopter. And number two, um, there was too much amplification of noise, particularly for lung sounds, which have a kind of a whistling, um, breathy sound to them, obviously. Um, so, uh, you know, the other thing that I noticed is that the parts that it's made of, I think, are probably a little on the cheap end in terms of this plastic looks kind of cheap, lightweight. I would fear that if I drop this, it would probably break. Um, although that could probably be said for uh, the more expensive ones. Uh, this tube is not polyurethane, which is what you'd like to see. Uh, for instance, on a Littman Cardiology 3, you have this polyurethane, which is uh, flexible, durable, doesn't pick up a lot of grime. Uh, as long as you don't wash it in a solvent like I did, it stays shiny. I'm not so convinced that this tube would do that job. Just there are some little quality issues like... Um, you can see how easy it is for me to open this battery compartment. It really, if you're going to be carrying this around with you all the time, you ought to make sure that it is well made because you're going to be beating this thing up big time. Finally, um, I'm not so sure anyone uh, who's not in cardiology or pulmonology needs an electronic stethoscope. And I include this review because I think it's just interesting to know how they work. I think before too long, no matter what specialty you're in, this kind of a stethoscope may be um, sort of the, the standard. But for now, the electronics need to improve and the price needs to come down. You can definitely buy more expensive digital stethoscopes. I think this is probably on the low to moderate end for, for digital electronic stethoscope. If you're interested in a higher quality, fancier one, Littman makes two of them. One is in the $300 range, the other one is in the $375 or $80 range. And I'm going to try and get my hands on one of those to review here very soon. Um, but in the meantime, it's kind of nice to know how they work. I would probably um, avoid this particular stethoscope, um, but it also gives you some idea what to look for. Play with it. Make sure the buttons work. Make sure that it looks like it's made of durable materials. Um, make sure it works properly. You don't have um, battery doors opening too easily. Just little things like that. Um, really detract from what you get from digital electronics. You get the high-end electronics or the, the, the modern electronics and not such great quality. And I guess they do that to make it more affordable. But in my opinion, not so worth it. Um, if you have a chance to get a digital stethoscope, um, again, unless you're in cardiology or pulmonology, you probably don't need one. But they're awful fun to play with. Uh, just make sure you get a good quality one. Anyway, um, that's it for now. Uh, if you're interested in more information on stethoscopes, please drop by the blog, www.mypatraining.com. We have a lot of information about stethoscopes. We have a lot of information about physician assistant education and careers, how to get into PA school, what it's like when you're there, what it's like being a physician assistant. So if those interest you, I hope you'll come on by. And we have a forum and a podcast, both of which are free. So please stop by. I look forward to talking to you again. Hopefully I'll see you on the blog.